first we're going to need some components. One Arduino board, two breadboards, some wires, three potentiometers, three dials, three 330 ohm resistors, a RGB LED, and a ping pong board. First, let's put the potentiometer board together. Place the potentiometers side by side in the order of RGB. Place a ground wire on the right hand pin of each potentiometer. Connect the grounds all to a common rail on the right. Now get color corresponding wires and place them on the RGB signals. Now connect the positive wire to the left hand pin of each potentiometer. Again connect into a common rail. Now take the second breadboard. Place the RGB LED in the center at the top. Place a 330 ohm resistor on each of the color pins. Leave the ground empty. Now get a ground cable and put it in the ground pin. Place a RGB wire on each of the RGB pins. Now for the LED board and the potential meter board to come together. Connect the RGB wires into pins 11, 10 and 9 and the ground into ground. Now put the 5 volt of the potentiometer into 5 volt and the ground into ground. Grab the signal cables and place them in AO, A1 and A2. It's always safe to double check that everything is fine and in the right place. Lay out all the components neatly and perhaps stick the potentiometer board down on a sturdy surface. Plug in the USB. Gently slip on the ping pong ball onto the LED. Check that everything is fine one last time. Now we're ready for coding. There are three main sections within the sketch environment. First up, we state any variables. Next is the void setup section, which is only called once to set up and initialize pin modes. The main section is the void loop. This is where the Arduino takes its instructions from running in a continuous loop. We'll start off by stating our variables for the pins on the RGB LED. Here we have used PWM pins 9, 10 and 11 for green, blue and red respectively. This section tells the Arduino which pins the potential meters are plugged into. In this case AO, A1 and A2 for red, green and blue. We then state a variable for the color value of each color pin. This is the value that will read and be mapped within the void loop section. With that done, we now go ahead and tell the Arduino that each pin on the LED is an output, which it will then later assign and write a value to. The setup will only run once to the Arduino board. Now for the void loop section. We start off by mapping the values that the Arduino reads from the input sensors, in this case three parts. What this does is take the values of the parts between 0 and 1024 and converts it to a value between 0 and 255, which it then sends to the LED. 
We also invert these values to make sure that the pots go in a clockwise manner. Once the Arduino processes those functions, it then writes the values into, LED, into the LED. It does this using the analog write function, you can see here. So that's the code. It's pretty simple and produces some cool results in a fun interactive device. We still need to upload all of this to the Arduino, however. First off, we click, click Compile to double check there are no mistakes and everything will run smoothly. Now all we do is connect the Arduino with the computer via the USB cable and click Upload. Wait until it says Done Uploading. Now let's check it out and have a play. Boy. By adjusting the RGB dials, you can add red and minus it, or add green and minus it, or add blue and minus it, changing the colors to different spectrums, and you can use this to create 1024 different colors.